I'm Tree, and this is Project Transparency, kind of the big thought issue. So, if you follow me on any social media, or just get subscriptions of my videos, y'all know I saw Sherman Alexie speak last night, which Sherman Alexie is one of my favorite authors. I'm not as well read in his work as I am in other authors. I really enjoy his work, but I'm working on it. It's kind of the problem in, you know, money and the exchange of goods and services and things. But seeing him talk was amazing. I met him very, very, very briefly. Noam met him for a much longer period of time because the meet and greet was only open to like faculty and staff, which, okay. But I did get an autograph just for me in meeting him. Look at that. Mind you, he signed one of his novels for Noam and I. But this one was just for me. And we were sitting with one of Noam's colleagues, and colleague has seen Sherman Alexie speak many times. And at the end of it, colleague was said, very kind of dazed, that he's never seen Sherman Alexie talk like this before. And in unison, Noam and I asked, well, have you ever seen him speak on a res before? And the kitty laments. And I think that was the difference, was that instead of seeing him in a space that's dominated by white people, we were seeing him in a space that was on the reservation. For those of you who don't know, I live very close to the Menominee Reservation in Wisconsin, and my partner, Gnome, teaches there. But some of the things that Sherman Alexie talked about, yeah, and he talked about things ranging from racism to sexism to prejudice against mental illness, while always situated in a humorous standpoint, were really important, I think. And I'm not sure that they could have, could have been talked about in a different venue in the same ways. But what, but what really stood out to me, because the entire, the entire talk was framed by the story of him as a child, very small child, like five months old child, um, and brain damage. And he talked about how a lot of his work as an artist, as a poet and a writer and a screenplay writer, screenwriter, screenwriter, comes about because not only is he from a storytelling tradition, that all of that comes not just from the, this heritage, but also from these places of mental illness. And he said things like it came from the sacred and the profane and brain damage, and that for, and that for much of his young life he was punished for these things, and that we've lost our tolerance and celebration of eccentricity. And I think most importantly, for someone who doesn't believe in magic, because Sherman Alexie does not, he, he believes in, and he said this, he believes in interpreting circumstance and coincidence in exactly the way you want. So that that is what magic and fate and things are but that you have magic up here. And as much as he did get called out by a teenager for contradicting himself, a really interesting conversation that came about from that because of that apparent hypocrisy, even though magic in that context was meant as a metaphor, but yes, hypocrisy. I, I think the statement stands that our cultures don't allow for any sort of differentiation and everything. Everything is about being normalized. So if you are a person that has 
some sort of mental illness or a physical impairment or anything, if you're not normal, then you're automatically not only suspect, but less than. And I say this as somebody who has mental issues and physical issues and who even in being intelligent is considered outside of the normal. So, yes, that was really cool, and Sherman Alexi is amazing, and if he's ever in y'all's area, ever, I don't care what you do, go see the guy. Brilliant. Read his books, too. So, that was weirdly kind of low-key for this, and it's going to continue to be, because like I said, this is like the big thought iteration of Project Transparency. And um, I had talked a little bit last week because I had things going on that that Nick Cave had had this little bit of a conversation about artist responsibility. And the name of the show he's doing that I was talking about is Made by Whites for Whites. And it's all these very these artifacts of racism that are on, only, that are not really artifacts, that because racism is still prevalent everywhere. We just have gotten better about hiding it, which is not good. I'm talking about the artist's civic responsibility. And this is, and Lane, you know, I, I, I know that, you know, as a, a an artist, you often... <laughs> struggle with the idea of conceptualism as well as being civic-minded and while you agree with the ideas of social justice it's it's more difficult for you to do and that's true of a lot of people so you know we're, we're all works in progress and we all have to try to feel better I fail quite a bit honestly but Nick Cave who is one of my favorite artists. His use of fiber and found object and mixed media totally influenced my work very, very early in my art making practice. And I will put a link to I will put a link to the article like over here where Colson is and a link to a video of Nick Cave and seeing one of his sound suit performances, like here, like here, there will be things, and if you can't find them in the video, they'll be in the drawer. Because, you know, when in doubt, put things in the drawer. The thing is, is that the article didn't necessarily talk as much about Nick Cave's thoughts on a, an artist's responsibility as I was hoping. But, Say, reminding artists that we do have a civic responsibility to confront injustice, to confront oppression is important, I think. I think I, I struggle with definitions of art where I live because oftentimes they're decorative and not conceptual and there's nothing wrong with decorative and non-conceptual except that I don't necessarily consider that art. I, consider it very high craft, potentially, but for me, art has to confront. It ha Even if it does it in a very, like, soft manner, it has to make us think about things rather than go, ooh, pretty. <laughs> pretty pictures of ducks. I'm sorry, I'm not as together about this today as I want to be. I, I'm tired and a little bit sick, if you can't tell. But yeah, it's like, Art is supposed to, to con confront things and make us think about things. And if you look at the history of art, it does that. But in this article, Nick Cave was talking about how his art comes from object. That there'll be something that informs and dictates the rest of the piece. And that's really interesting, especially since one of the centerpieces of one of the pieces in the Made for Whites by Whites show is a spittoon that looks like a person of color's head. 
but in that really racist caricature sort of way. So it's even more offensive. And how that dictated not only the piece, but like the idea of the show behind it. And it got me thinking when I was reading about it that my places of coming at work at coming to conceptualism and social justice and things are always about story because story has been always been very important to me. It's like, if you're familiar with my work, my work has a tendency to tell story or to reference stories so that you can meditate for yourself. And I kind of feel like I'm just babbling and I'm sorry for, again, I'm sick. But yes, artists have a civic duty. It doesn't matter if you're a writer, a visual artist, a performance artist, poet, photographer. It doesn't matter. We all have a duty to try and leave the world better, to change people's minds or at least allow them to be more informed. And you know, sneak in some critical thinking. So that is my connection to all of these things this week, is the idea that we have a civic responsibility to change the world for the better. All right, that I'm sure none of that made any sort of sense. I'm sorry, like I said, I'm sick. And I just wanted to share ideas and they were not co coalescing today. I'm sorry, I will do better next time. Lane, I will see you sometime soon. Remember to do the thing where you like, subscribe, share, and I'm going to go. The kitty loves me. The kitty does not understand why I'm talking to the, the one-eyed god currently. <laughs>